Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman. I'm continuing to do build to build walkthroughs of Windows 10. This is the Windows 10 technical preview still. It's the insider's preview. Last week was a crazy week because we had build 158, then literally the next day 159, and then a day or two later 162. This means that we are marching forward to the end, the actual release or the initial release of Windows 10 on July 29th. Now there's not a lot of new functionality. It's all about bug fixes between builds 58, 59, and 62. So I thought it would be interesting to take this video and go through some of the control panel and some of the settings because things have moved but they're still easy to find. So let's go through that because uh, you might want to change things. Like for example, Where's my PC? Maybe uh, I don't have that on this particular uh, machine. Uh, your settings should be kept as you upgrade from 7 to 8, but if you lose stuff, remember you can always right click. Here I can say either display settings or personalize. Now display settings won't bring you to the classic control panel. The control panel has been rewritten. The control panel looks like this now. Okay, So display settings is a little bit different. This is an interesting choice, but I understand it because sometimes you see people running the their screens in the wrong resolution. And uh, I know I've gone to my parents' house before, found them running their screen in the wrong resolution. So you'll notice that here, there's nothing about resolution. There's nothing about your, uh, you know, I'm right now running 1366 by 768. There is simply text size. Okay. Resolutions down here, that's an advanced display setting. Okay. Here I can change my, my resolution. That happens to be grayed out because I'm doing a recording, but this is where you chair, hook up your multiple monitors. You can continue to dig around. There's things like color calibration built in, adjusting your clear type text, okay, making sure that things are clear. All of these things will be set appropriately and on by default but you can always get to the classic control panel if you dig far enough even all the way down to something like your display adapter properties I'm gonna hit back so let's go through this let's say where's my icons well I can go to display settings I can click personalize and that is part of themes desktop icon settings and then now this very familiar dialog pops up computers users files hit OK but the thing to remember is that you don't have to dig you could have just come down here to where Cortana says ask me anything and you could just click there and type in something like desktop icons you see show or hide common icons on the desktop and you go right there nearly everything you can change can be asked for in pretty reasonable plain English or whatever language that you speak so let's start at the beginning we'll go through all of these one at a time system this sends you to display you can change your DPI setting okay this is whether or not you want your fonts larger or smaller based on whether or not you have a high resolution display or not or a high DPI display it will pick an appropriate one it knows your DPI every display and it knows that at a 1366 by 768 monitor that 100 percent looks good for me notifications and actions is an interesting one if you swipe in with your finger from the right here you can see that's my finger right there swipe in from the right you get the notification center so then the question is what applications can do notifications system level notifications and what do I want to allow so these quick actions here see these here you can click on those and change them those are the row of four right here now I don't take notes that often that I need that to be a quick action but I do VPN a lot so I'll pick VPN so now VPN back into work is a choice make sense okay what icons appear on the taskbar that's these guys here I can hide them or show them if I don't want to see something I can turn it on or off there's power appearing and disappearing right there you can have total control over what shows up in your notification area. System icons, that's ones like the clock. Input indicator, that's changing your languages. If you speak more than one language or you have more than one language installed. 
Show Me Tips About Windows is a new feature in Windows where as you're using it, they'll notice that you're doing something and they'll give suggestions. So I was using, for example, Microsoft Edge recently and it popped up a note to make sure that I knew how the reading list worked or knew how reading mode worked or one time Cortana popped up and let me know that it was there and it was ready to, uh, to do things. Show alarms and incoming VoIP calls, voice over IP. That means if you're logged into Skype but your screen is locked, do you want to be notified of calls on the lock screen, things like that. And you can go and turn off uh, these banners one by one. Like if you don't like getting banners from the mail application, little toast, I call them toasts, the little notifications that pop up, you can go and turn those off. This here is the new Add Remove Programs page. This took me a little bit of a while to, uh, to understand, but I, I get it now. This is where you say, well, I want to uh, uninstall, say, paint.net. So I type in paint, I click here, and I click uninstall. Okay, and that will go and launch the uninstaller for that. And they've unified that. Notice that Fresh Paint is a store application, while this is a classic Windows application, and they both appear in the same location, in the same dialog. I can also sort by size, which is nice see what things are taking up space and then get rid of them. So now I'm freeing up right there a gig and a half on this machine. Also if you have another drive, like if I put in for example an SD card or a secondary drive, I can choose to show just apps on one drive or the other. So this is going to be a lot nicer for people to go and get rid of old software or software that's taking up a lot of space. I'm, I'm actually Pretty, pretty excited about this page. Multitasking. This is setting up things like snap. Snap to the left, snap to the right. And whether or not you do snap assist. So for example, if I have one program here and I snap to the right, notice how snap assist says, oh, I'll snap that one over here. Let's show what I can snap next to it. When you do virtual desktops, do you want to show Windows open on all the desktops or just the one you're using? So for example, if I go and switch desktops, notice how you can't see that I'm running the control panel on the other desktop. That can be changed as well. Now tablet mode is an interesting one. Notice how I've got the start menu here, but if I swipe in, select tablet mode, the task bar is now simpler. I hit the Windows button and now I have more of a start screen. Do you want Windows to be more touch friendly when you're using it as a tablet? A lot, a lot of choices. I like it. This is new here, battery saver. Uh, right now I'm plugged in, but this will go and turn off background activity and save your battery. And you can go and even say, well, when do you want to do that? How low does my battery go before I'm real paranoid? And then maybe I really, really want mail to run in the background or some other application. I want it to be always allowed. This is going to be nice for airplane flights. You can also click on battery use, and this will show you which applications on your machine take up the most battery. Now, I have been doing mostly browsing. So you can see that Edge is taking up the most battery. But over the time, when I start using different applications, we'll find out who are the battery hogs and who aren't. Power and sleep, you're familiar with. This makes sense. And of course, when you hit additional power settings, it pops out to the familiar power plan dialog. Storage, again, if I put in an SD card or a, uh, an additional hard drive, I can decide whether or not new music and new pictures will go there. This will be nice for non-technical parent. Offline maps. If I'm going to use my tablet wandering around, I might want to go and download pre-downloaded maps of the USA or the state that I lived in. And then do I really want this happening on metered connections? We'll talk about metered connections in a little bit, but the idea that if I'm on cell, do I really want those maps being updated? And this is part of the whole Nokia Here Maps partnership. So that's going to be downloading there. Now default apps has always been interesting. Which application is going to be the default for the calendar, for the email, things like that. Now I've got both Mail and Outlook. The touch-friendly Mail and then the Outlook 2016. I can pick between those. Go over to Devices. Here you can see my printer. Again, you see this metered connection popped up. 
This is, let's say that I plug in a mouse, but I'm on a metered connection. I'm on a cell phone or I'm on some connection where they're counting the bytes. Do I want it to automatically get the drivers or do I want it to, to say, no, I couldn't get that driver. You're on a metered connection. Connected devices is an interesting one. These are mostly network connected devices. My mouse is Bluetooth connected. My direct TV is on the network. My uh, wife is on her computer right now. We also have a Plex and our router. Those all show up. Bluetooth, you can see my headset is paired by Bluetooth. The mouse, and if you have a what's called precision touchpad, and right now you'll see those primarily on a Surface Pro, you'll have choices for gestures that a uh, precision touchpad can, can have, and hopefully newer laptops will include those as well. Spell checking and autocomplete all built into Windows and uh, you can modify all of those settings just as if you could on a phone. Autoplay, what happens when you plug in a drive? Do you want to open a folder? Do you open and put in a memory card? Do you want to take an action? Or just ask me every time. Moving on to network and internet, you can see that I'm on my Wi-Fi network here. Now there's a, two different options for networks. There's advanced options, which tells you about IP addresses and things. And then there's manage Wi-Fi settings, and I'll cover each of those. Advanced options, this is where you set whether this is a private network or a public network. And this is not obvious, but when this is on, when Find Devices and Content is on, you are on a private network. I'll give you an example of what that looks like. So if we go here to network, see it says, there you go, it's starting to come in now. There's other computers on my network showing up. Okay, that's because I trust this network. Now if I turn that off, Network discovery is turned off. You've seen this before in previous versions of Windows. Now if I say turn that on, it's going to say, well, do you really want to do that? Do you want to turn that on for public networks? It's not a good idea to be file sharing on a public network. No, no, just make this network private. So I'll make that network private. Okay, and then they come back in. And you'll see now that that is turned on. Now under Manage Wi-Fi settings, this is where you keep the track. This is where you keep track of all the different Wi-Fi that you've ever connected to, including free ones. So here's me connecting to one in uh, Vancouver, BC. This can be a little bit disturbing. You'd be surprised how many different Wi-Fi networks that you connect to over uh, a period of time. So it's a good idea to go in here and delete some of those. Airplane mode makes sense, pretty self-explanatory. Data usage, very similar to the battery saver and the storage setting area, lets you know what apps are talking to the internet and how hard they're working. VPN, from here again, related settings. Some of these will pop you out to the classic, but you'll notice that you can do a lot of stuff without ever going to the classic control panel. Dial up and proxy settings. Switching over to personalization. This is an interesting one. Here's where I can go and change my background. Notice that there's lots of choices and I can also pick my own. But see that the theme itself is choosing colors from the picture. I thought this was really cool. That's coming from here under colors. Automatically pick an accent color from my background. So I can have it be pink and blue if I'd like. Or I could say, look at this picture and pick a color that is appropriate from that picture and you'll see that it picked a color off of this rock. The lock screen has this choice now of having a picture or a slideshow or the Windows Spotlight which will showcase different features in Windows and give you tips and tricks. So I'm going to keep it on Spotlight. I can pick applications that I want to use for detailed status. So I'll have for example weather, Twitter, Foursquare, things like that. Now themes looks like it has a new control panel, but in fact, that's the classic control panel again, okay? Fortunately, Windows 7 and 8 themes still work, so uh, that, that would have been sad if we uh, had lost that great feature. There's that desktop icon settings again. Now here, I can say use start full screen, and that gives me a full screen start menu and there's just the start menu rather than the start screen. I'll go back to pick my automatic color. I like the color thing. Remember of course you can resize these 
if you find that too overwhelming. And I'm told that this is actually a bug. It's going to be three wide when it ships, not four wide. Clicking on accounts. Pretty straightforward. Plugging in my work account, my Microsoft account. Sign in options. Pin numbers. Windows Hello. Uh, I have not set this up yet. Let's see if it works. Okay, so I did my domain password, and here's my Microsoft account password. And a PIN number. Alright, so I can use this PIN to sign into Windows. Let's set up my fingerprint with Windows Hello. Get started. Okay, let's do my PIN. Oops, went too fast. Looks like I don't have to press enter. There we go. Scan your finger on the fingerprint reader. So I'm scanning my finger on this cool little fingerprint reader that my laptop has that I've never used before. Close. All right, so I have a fingerprint in there. So that's cool. Can I lock my screen now? That's cool. Work access, can I join my domain or connect to my work or school? This allows them to push applications out to me so they can have their own kind of private school or work related store. You can see I've connected my personal account and my work account. And then I can decide whether or not I want to sync my settings. So when I change my theme, do I want my colors to change everywhere? Switching down to time and language, pretty straightforward. These are regional settings. You can also add different uh, languages. So for example, if I wanted to add a language, they're going to go automatically to Windows Update and bring that down for us. So then now notice in the lower right corner, I can switch between English and Amharic. Amharic has their own keyboard. So I will get an Amharic keyboard. This is the Amharic input method editor. And if you see when I switch to English, I get the English keyboard. That'll be nice for uh, emailing people back home. Speech. Now, I never tried this because I don't have a non-native accent, but apparently you can tell Windows that you may have a non-native accent. So then it will try, I don't know, harder, something like that. Pick different names. You have selected Microsoft Mark Mobile as the cool. Set up my microphone for speech recognition. I'll do that another time. Almost done. Going to ease of access. This is all of the areas for people who are differently abled to uh, either have the screen written to them, have the screen magnified for them, all the same ways that things worked. Also, a number of high contrast themes to make sure that you can see stuff if you have low or uh, somehow compromised vision. Default closed captioning, style and size. I like my captions larger. Whether or not you want the on-screen keyboard to have things like filter keys. How big you want your mouse. Let's have my pointer larger. And also this nice feature, mouse keys, being able to use a numeric keypad to move your mouse around the screen. Now, under ease of access, buried under other options are turning off animations in Windows entirely. So if I turn those off, this is actually the keyboard happening in the background. There was a notification that just happened. So you can see that is under, under the Action Center here. So I'm not sure when this Play Animations in Windows changes. Let's go and see if it changes now. Yep, see how the Start menu has no animation? It just appears. So if those animations bother you, you can always turn those off. Just note that they are down in Ease of Access. And also notice how, again, those are my fingers. You can see the, the touch feedback. That is controlled here show visual feedback when I touch the screen. All done are under other options. But a reminder, you can just go and search for that stuff. You can always go right there. You don't have to dig around in the settings. Privacy, just like a popular tablet, you've got all the different settings where you can go in here and say, well, I don't want my location shared or my camera used. I even want to shut it down on an app-by-app -app basis. I don't want this app using my camera, or I don't want this app using my microphone. Very, very detailed 
I can go in here and turn any of those off. Now Cortana, Cortana is down here saying ask me anything. You can tell Cortana to stop listening to you, stop getting to know me, and it will uh, allow you to turn off all these things. So you can be as private as you want. Turn off location, turn off camera, tell Cortana to stop talking to you completely. You could even right click here, say Cortana, and say hidden. And Cortana goes away completely. So you don't have to, uh, to do that if you don't want to. Yeah, see there, Cortana's trend. Please don't leave me. Account info, who can talk to contacts, right? Excel can talk to my contacts so I can have a list of them. What applications are allowed to access your calendar messaging? If you have a radio like Bluetooth, your apps need to have permission to do that. And then also feedback and diagnostics because we're all part of the Insiders program. Uh, they have got this notion of asking for feedback. Do you want to know? Do you want Windows to ask you how you think Windows is doing once a week, automatically, or never? And then finally, apps that run in the background. Do you want to allow those apps to run in the background? And if you can turn them off and save a little power. Finally, under Windows Update, this is where we update uh, the preview builds. Again, I'm on build 162. I can go down in here and say get insider builds or stop insider builds. There I'm on the fast ring of the Windows Insiders and I plan on staying on that so I hope to get updates even beyond the release of Windows 10. Windows 10 of course includes Windows Defender for real-time malware protection and uh, you don't need to do anything that just happens for you automatically. It's nice to have virus protection built in. I can also back up using file history so this will basically, I like to do this with my desktop. Add a disk drive, um, usually a, a hard drive, a USB hard drive, and then automatically get file history for all of my files on my desktop or in uh, documents. And uh, you still have Windows 7 backups and restores. So if you have an old backup on Windows 7, you can restore it from Windows 7 to Windows 10 if you wanted to get to those older files. So that's kind of nice. Recovery here, if you want to reset the PC or restart it from a USB drive. Mine is activated because I'm using the Insider Preview. And then if you're a developer, do you want to have developer mode to you know to side load applications, to bring applications in, develop apps on your own? I want to remind you that this is down under the Start menu. Just click Settings. It's right there. Very convenient. And then you go click here. If I want to change the Start menu, type Start. Shows up here. Or I can go in here and search for it. So you can always get to settings very quickly. Here, settings, and search, and they show up as a list. Notice that modern, st uh, modern start items show up like a gear, and classic ones show up with this icons. So there I can get even to older settings like this. You'll always be able to find your settings because it searches all of them. So that is a pretty darn comprehensive tour of the settings of Windows 10 on build 10162. And hopefully we'll see an even nicer, more stable, more bug-free version of Windows uh, when it releases later this month. Please do subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you want to see specific videos showing you how to use an aspect of Windows, whether it be 7, 8, or 10, let me know in the comments and I'll do the best I can to accommodate. Thanks a lot.